Wise Free for Cracking Crypto. Today I'd like to talk to you about risk management. If you're a poker player, you know this term as bankroll management. If you trade the stock market, you know this strategy as portfolio management. This is a vital skill for traders to have, whether you're new to the game or a veteran. In fact, I would make the assertion that the difference between a new or lucky trader and a veteran trader is the ability to have the skill of bankroll management. The difference between someone who gets lucky as a trader and somebody who is a veteran trader or a good trader in my opinion is whether or not you make consistent gains over a long period of time. If you get lucky and make money in the short term, that doesn't make you a good trader. If you have risk management, if you have portfolio management, that makes you a good trader. That will allow you to profit in a downturn market because anybody can profit in a bull market. I see so many people watch a coin they bought into. The price dips down low and low and low and they FOMO and they get fear and they get anxiety about the the coin that they've bought into, I'm losing all this money, I'm seeing all these other coins pump up, what should I do? Nevertheless, inevitably, they sell at a loss. Just to jump ADD style, like a squirrel on meth, to another coin that they want to pump, they hop into it, they throw money into that, they lost 40% on this coin they jumped out of, they dive into this other coin that they see shooting up 60%, it goes up 2%, and then it dumps on them. I see it happen all the time. Anyone can get lucky. If you buy into a coin and it goes up 100% overnight, you're not a good trader. You got lucky. Understand that. 90% of people who get into trading, whether it's cryptocurrencies, stocks and bonds, securities, uh, derivatives, assets, it doesn't matter. 90% of people who try to trade don't make it. The reason why is because it takes discipline. They do fine over the first few weeks or months, but then they start losing they get their first taste of loss. They get their first taste of anxiety and fear and doubt. They hit their first bear market or their first major correction. And after that, it's like they lose their groove. Everything they touch turns to ash in their hands. Every coin they buy into dumps on them. They watch their portfolio diminish. You know, whereas now they were up, you know, they had doubled their money. Now they're down to what they originally had. And now they're going to double down. I'm going to bet it all big and, and double my money. And then they have nothing. And now they're putting money into it, but they're losing it because they don't know what they're doing. They're not good traders. That's when people quit. And that's what makes the 10% of people who do make it rich because the money that they lost goes to the 10%. Goes to the 10% of people who are disciplined goes to the 10% of people who are willing to take the time, effort, and energy to learn how to do this right, to develop a strategy, and to manage their portfolio in a smart and correct fashion. And that's what I'm here to do today. I'm here to teach you how to do that. I'm here to tell you that you are going to make those mistakes if you are new to trading. You are going to make those mistakes. You are going to lose money. You are going to FOMO. You are going to make trades based on anxiety and fear unless you have someone to guide you, unless you have a plan, unless you can develop a strategy to trade and then trade that strategy. I'm here to help you with that plan, along with the fellow members of the Kraken Crypto community. So what we're seeing in the crypto market right now is a frenzy. It's Bitcoin mania, altcoin mania. It's easy to make money right now. It's like you couldn't lose. It's just like the summer of 2016 all over again with altcoins pumping 100%, 1,000%, you know, gains that people have never seen before. It's easy to make money in this bull market. You can easily get lucky in a market like this. But you don't want to be lucky. You want to be good. If you're a trader right now, you couldn't be happier with the market that you have because there's so many dummies out there giving us their money. Don't be one of those dummies. Let's not forget it's easy to be lucky. It's hard to make gains in a bear market. It's hard to make gains off corrections, but I'll show you how. Lesson one, make a plan 
and stick to it. Never enter into a trade blind. Know how much of your portfolio you want to put into a coin, to put into a token, to put into a position, and then plan for the upside and the downside of the movement of that asset. Don't, don't jump in into a position with your entire portfolio allocation. Dollar cost average in. That way you can double up on the way down and maximize your downsize potential. That is the way that you can make money in a corrective market, in a bear market. And sell off in increments on the way up to maximize your profit. This strategy works both ways, going up and going down the market. But either way, the point here is that you make a plan and then you execute that plan. You don't enter into trades blindly. You don't see a coin pumping and jump in and try to ride it to the top only to get dumped on and to make a measly 2%. There are a lot of different strategies to do this. Please check out the other Cracking Crypto videos on different strategies and methods to see chart patterns, to learn about accumulation phases, to learn how to follow the rumor mill, to learn how to buy into a coin that you truly believe in. There's all kinds of trading strategies out there. There's all kinds of ways to see with the technical analysis, we make predictions about how coins will go, but we have no crystal balls. We make educated guesses and then the market does what it's gonna do. The best thing that you can do, the goal of a trader is to maximize your potentials to get lucky. You don't just hope to get lucky, you actively create your profit opportunities. Don't enter into a trade without an exit plan. How do you plan to exit the trade that you get into? What's your exit position? Depending upon your entry position, how far down are you willing to see the price go before you stop loss? Are you willing to see a 30 or 40% correction? Do you believe that the price of the coin is going to go back up? Is that something that you're willing to sit and weather through to see your portfolio in that asset diminish and diminish and diminish and wither? Are you willing to, to stand through that? Do you have the discipline? Do you have the stones to sit there and feel the anxiety and the doubt and the fear creeping into you, thinking that you made a mistake, thinking that you need to sell, thinking that you need to cut your losses and move on to the next? Was that your plan? What was your plan? Did you have a plan? That's the point. Plan a trade and trade that plan. Create a plan and execute it and stick to it. Whatever you, tr whatever you plan to do, do it. Don't change your mind based on emotion. Don't change your mind based on what other people are saying. Don't change your mind based on what the markets are doing. Make a plan and stick to it. Don't sell at a loss unless that loss is a planned stop loss so you can reallocate your portfolio to something else if you are trading on a short-term basis. If you are trading mid to long term, don't sell at a loss. There's no reason to. Why did you buy into something if you didn't believe in the midterm or long term potentials of it? If you're trading the swings of things, if you're trading the spreads, then yes, you cut your losses and move on. But that's part of your plan. You don't cut your losses when that wasn't the plan. Plan the trade. Execute the plan. This takes time. This takes discipline. And it will come, and mistakes will be made. You have to make them, no matter how good of a teacher you have. You will learn these mistakes the hard way, and then you will be a better trader. Lesson two, portfolio allocation. I have a diversified portfolio. This is an age-old lesson that you've heard many, many times across many different platforms with many applications. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. You've heard traders say that. You've heard investors say that. Then tell me, why do we see so many newbies running around putting 100% of their portfolio into a coin that they think is going to pump? And then when they lose 20%, they lose 20% of their entire portfolio instead of just 20% of their allocation of their portfolio for that trade. Why would you do that? When the losses that you incur on one trade could be equally made up for in the gains that you make on another trade. 
The idea here for a veteran good trader, someone who makes consistent gains over the long term, is to average your gains out over the spread of your portfolio so that your losses are covered by the gains in the other and that your total upside potential is greater than your downside potential, that the growth of your portfolio is greater than the loss of your portfolio. Having a diversified portfolio is the mark of a good trader. If you have a $1,000 portfolio and you put $100 in 10 coins and make 10% on nine of those coins and the 10th coin pumps 100% and you're kicking yourself thinking, mm, why didn't I put all of my portfolio into that coin? I could have doubled my money. I could be rich right now. Let me tell you right now, that's a stupid thought. And you're stupid if you think that because you got lucky. You got lucky with the coin pumping 100%. You didn't know that was going to happen. You got lucky. And it's not good to trade on luck. It was smart to diversify your portfolio because you know what? You've seen a net gain in your portfolio. You can sell at a profit and you can move on to the next thing. Now, personally, I would keep the nine coins and the 10% gains. I wouldn't sell those off. 10% is enough money for me unless you see a downturn coming. You're doing your technical analysis. You see in the charts that we've reached the peak. Maybe you bought into a, a coin late. Maybe it's only going to go up 10% before it's going to correct 40% and you'd rather avoid that because you don't have a long-term strategy. That's fine. You don't have to trade everything long-term except for Bitcoin. Trade Bitcoin long-term. Buy and hold Bitcoin. Strong hand. Shout out to Adam Meister. You can never know for certain what the market will do. All the fundamental and technical analysis in the world will not predict the market for you 100%. As I said, that coin that pumped 100%, you got lucky. You got lucky that you managed to catch that 100% mark. You can't do that all the time. Nobody can do that all the time. I know traders who are very good at timing the highs and the dips. But they live in front of their computer. It is very, very difficult to time the dips and the highs. It's very difficult to do. That is elite class level stuff right there. Much easier and much wiser to have a good strategy and a good plan. Now, if you spread your money out, if you spread your portfolio out and you made those 10% gains on nine coins and 100% gain on, on the 10th coin, you're smart. You had a smart plan, a diversified portfolio. It's a good strategy. Uh, personally, for me, this isn't about me, but 50% of my portfolio is in Bitcoin. It's in cold storage. It is a long-term investment. I'm not touching it. I continually add to it. When I add to my portfolio allocation, I take 50% of it and I put it in cold storage. I think if you're not doing that, if you're not putting a significant amount of your portfolio into cold storage, you better be a really good trader. You better be a really good trader. And you better believe in what you're doing. You better believe in the coins that you're buying into and out of. Because what are you trading against? Bitcoin? Plan on leaving all that Bitcoin on an exchange forever? Things to think about. Have a plan. Now, 20% of the rest of my portfolio, so out of the 100% of my portfolio, 50% is in Bitcoin long-term storage. 20% is in crypto asset long-term investments. We can talk about those at a later date if you want specifics on what they are. But those are long-term holdings. I keep those on a trezor. I don't touch them. I add to them as I increase my portfolio. And I trade actively with the other 30% of my portfolio. Now, of that 30% of my portfolio, I allocate five, up to 15, sometimes 20, of that 30%, on different trades. Riskier short-term day trades, I'll wager 5% of that 30% allocation of my portfolio. On more what I believe are safer, more secure long-term swing trades, I'll allocate 10, 15, maybe even 20% if I really am, am betting big on it, if I really believe in what I'm doing. And this stuff takes faith. It takes knowledge. It takes wisdom. And that comes with time. It comes with discipline. It comes from making mistakes. You'll be better. Just stay in this. Keep doing this. Now, you have to have this discipline of portfolio allocation. 
And if you're just starting out with $100, that's cool. You're no different. You're not different because you only have $100. Buy $10 worth of 10 different coins. Make $2 off each trade when it goes up 20%. Don't be greedy. Be smart. Plan your trades. Trade your plan and watch your $100 grow to $1,000. Learn how to make money consistently with a couple hundred dollars. And if you can do that, then you will be ready to trade thousands of dollars. Because if you cannot manage $100, you will lose thousands of dollars. You're not ready. Be humble. Don't be greedy. Learn how to trade correctly with a small portfolio. If you can't manage $100, then you can't manage $1,000. It doesn't matter the size of your portfolio. If you don't have a strategy and you don't have a disciplined trade, then you will lose your money. It doesn't matter how much money you have. You'll lose it. This market will take it. Take the time to become skilled and disciplined before you bet your bank. You will thank yourself later. Learn how to make those mistakes when those mistakes only cost you 20 bucks before they cost you $2,000. The biggest mistake I see now with the feeding frenzy that we see right now in cryptocurrency is I see newbies coming in and some of them only have $100. You know, some of them are, you know, wealthier and that they got a couple thousand dollars, maybe ten thousand dollars, maybe more. But it doesn't matter the size of their portfolio. It doesn't matter. They don't know. How, they don't know what they're doing. And they put 75 percent, 50 percent, 100 percent into a token or into one thing. Unless you're unless you're putting it into Bitcoin. If you're putting it into Bitcoin, you're cool. You're safe. Right. All this this altcoin trading. This is for maximizing your profit. But if you just want to invest in something long-term, there's nothing wrong with just buying and holding Bitcoin. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I do that with half of my money. I just told you that. But if you're interested in maximizing your profits or maximizing your level of Bitcoin without spending fiat for it, you know, this is an opportunity for you to trade your Bitcoin and earn Bitcoin off your Bitcoin, compounding interest. So I see these newbies putting 75 to 100 percent of their portfolio into one coin based off one signal, based off one chart, based off one blog, based off one YouTube video. Uh, they don't know what they're doing and they don't know these people who are giving them their signals. They don't. And I mean, they might get lucky. They might. They usually don't. You know, that's all it is. And they will lose their money eventually. They don't have a good strategy. And in the end, they will lose their money to good strategies. To, to those with a good strategy, to good traders, because that's what it is. People who are good traders take the money away from the people who are bad traders. The money goes into the market and it leaves in the hands of the people who have a plan and who trade that plan and who are disciplined in their strategy. Develop a good disciplined trading strategy and then put your money where your mouth is. Lesson three, don't trade with emotion. As I've said earlier, don't FOMO. Shorthand, for those of you who don't know, FOMO stands for fear of missing out. Don't panic when you see your coin go down in value and you see other coins pumping 40, 50, 60%. That's, that's the majority of the talk that I hear on the chats and the forums lately. You know, people are just, hey, what's the next pump, bro? What are we moving to next? What's pumping next? What, should we get off Litecoin? Litecoin pumped, you know, all this. We got profit. Should we take profit right now? Should we move on to something else? What strats pumping? What Neo's? What is Neo going to pump 100%? What are we moving to now? I mean, it's it's ridiculous. It's like rabbits running around just looking for the next pump. I mean, it's not, none of these people know what they're doing. They're just looking for quick and easy profits and they're going to lose their money eventually. They're, they're going to get lucky. You know, these are new traders. As I said earlier, people get into the market, and it's exactly how it happened for me. I remember my first two weeks trading. I doubled my money. I didn't know what I was doing. And then I faced a correction, and I made mistakes, and I lost money. But I stuck into it. I stuck with it. I watched hours and hours of videos. I did hours and hours of charting. I still do. I listen to podcasts, you know, and... I continually expand my knowledge and my perception of what's going on and I practice 
and that's how you get better. And now I've seen my portfolio increase 5x since I started and consistently. And my gains have just begun. But these kids running around looking for the next pump, they're idiots. They're bad traders and they will lose their money. And if you want to follow that strategy, you will lose your money too. You know, it takes time. It takes discipline to learn how to do this, but you can learn it. It's not hard. It's as hard as you make it. I will give you some advice on how to trade mindset wise. Do some meditation before you trade. This is stressful. People don't understand the psychological effect that this has on you. You know, most people are familiar with working and getting a paycheck and putting it in the bank and, you know, worrying about spending too much money at the grocery store or at the dollar store or what have you. But it's different. It's different when you're in a, a market and you know that all these people are around that are just millionaires and have become millionaires off this who started with ten dollars and you hear all these stories and you know that opportunity and you start you know having that rock star fantasy in your head like oh that's going to be me and, and then you make a couple hundred dollars or a couple thousand dollars depending on the size of your portfolio and then you start learning and trading and meeting people and it's it, but then you start losing money sometimes and it's it it has profound effects on the human psyche it is a very very weird emotional situation to be in and it takes a very stable-minded person to be able to maintain this, um, to maintain your composure, to maintain your position, to hold on to your position, to not make a mistake. And it takes discipline to sit down and execute a plan or, or to design a plan before you enter into a position. Most people don't have that, don't have that discipline. They just, they just want to get on. Uh, you know, hop on a Bitfinex or whatever exchange they're using and they want to, you know, see what's pumping, throw money in, hope to catch a quick 20% and bail out and, you know, whatever they do with their profit, I don't know. Hopefully they buy Bitcoin. And it's, it's not a good strategy. And it will not work for them in the long run. They will not be a successful trader in the long run if they do not develop discipline and if they do not develop a good trading strategy. So do some meditation before you trade or listen to some calming music, read some news, maybe read a book or an article, um, spend some time with your, with your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your kids or your family. Um, just, just chill out. It's going to be okay. You know, keep calm, carry on. Don't, don't get in there and, Start freaking out and make anxious trades and sell off at a loss because you see your coin dumping or jump into some pump because you see a price going up. Just don't do that. Just don't. Follow the plan. Stick to the plan. If this is starting to sound repetitive, it's because you need to hear this a bunch of times. You know? When you're done with this video, go back out to the Cracking Crypto page on YouTube. Watch the other videos where we go into specifics on how to spot market bottoms, on how to use indicators, on how to chart, on how to allocate your portfolio more effectively, on how to know when is a good time to buy and what is a good time to sell, to learn how to do that more effectively, dollar cost averaging. You know, we are a resource, we are a community and a team here to help you maximize your profit potential, but you need to have the right mindset and you need to cultivate an air of discipline and confidence about you to maximize your potential. And that is the purpose of this video. I just want to, I want to tell you, you know, don't, don't be too hard on yourselves because, uh, as I said, this, this does profound weird things to the human psyche and the human emotion. And it, it, uh, it becomes weird. Um, when you get into this and then you start really getting into this and then you fall down the rabbit hole and then you're, you can't even come up for air because you're too far down the rabbit hole and you've got this on your phone, you've got, you're running tab trader on your phone or you've got the Binance app on your phone, you're trading on Binance or you've got, you know, BTRAX if you've got an Apple phone or uh, um, it, it 
I mean, it can really begin to mirror and look like an obsession to the people who are around you who may not understand what you're doing and don't understand the phases and the levels of this, because there are phases to this. Um, and I think that the more emotional of a trader you are, the more a necessity you have to watch the markets all the time. Uh, I think the, yeah, I think that's a good rule. The, perhaps it'd be better to state, the worse of a trader you are is directly proportional to the amount of time you spend looking at a chart. Now, you have to look at a, a chart for a proper amount of time, depending upon your skill. And obviously, when you're starting out, you'll have to look at the chart longer because you don't have that mental memory, you know, to be able to look at a chart and, you know, extrapolate the necessary data and, and go. It takes time to learn how to do all that. But if you don't know what you're doing, but you're trying really hard, you're in the right place because that's, it's the people who won't put in that time who fail. And, you know, I would, I would make a trade. I, I would enter into a position, uh, you know, when I was in a period of making mistakes, I would enter into a position and then I would walk away from the computer and I'd go outside and then I'd come back inside. I'd be like, oh, wait, wait, no, I, I did it wrong. I get to sell now and I could move into this. Um, and then I'd sell and then I'd, I'd like sit down and start watching TV or start reading a book or something. Then I'd get back up I'm like, no, 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 I did that wrong. And I'd switch around and I'd do it <coughs> all the while paying transaction fees. And, you know, then I'd, I'd be like, all right, okay, I, I did it right. And I turned the computer off. And then five minutes later, I'd pick up my phone and get on Tab Trader and be like, no, I, I did it wrong. I should. I, did it, it all went up 5%, I should take 5%. And so, and then it's just, <laughs> it could probably ruin relationships. So what I'm saying is if you're in that period or if you're worried about going through that period, like um, it's not, it's not so bad when you get out the other side. Um, and I think that's another thing when I was talking about meditation, um, understand what's important in your life, you know, learn to press pause, learn to, um, make good trades, you know, develop a plan, go in the market, go into the exchange and set your buys and set your sells and set your stop losses and maybe set a couple of alerts and then get off your computer, you know, do what you're supposed to be doing. Go spend time with your family, go spend time at your job, go work on writing that novel, you know, come back in a couple of days, see what the markets did. You know, now if you're a day trader and you want to, you want to live that lifestyle, like you go for it. I, I day trade, but I'm just, it, it comes with a sacrifice. It comes at a sacrifice to your life. I enjoy sitting in front of the computer and watching the charts and making the trades and trading the plan. But I mean, I don't have to anymore. I make, I make good money executing good plans. You know, now I take advantage of profitable day trade opportunities when they arise. But what I'm saying is when you execute good plans and make good trades in advance and stick to those plans, you don't have to hunt for them. Like all these kids running around looking for the next pump bar. That's what they're doing. They're, they're glorified day traders. Well, they're not day traders. They're just, they're just pump chasers. But that's what they're looking for. They're looking for that quick buck. They're not willing to put in the time. And if they were willing to put in, and they end up spending an exorbitant, inordinate amount of time watching the markets on their phone or on their computer because they threw their 100% of portfolio in and they can't drop below this level and it has to, to go up and we're trying to sell at the peak. And it's not a way to live your life. Execute good plans. Go spend time with your family. That's the way to do it. Learn how to chart. Uh, links in the comment section down below. Go to tradingview.com. Um, no affiliate link. Um, just just a, no referral link. Just just a link. Um, you know, like I said, back out into the Correcting Crypto YouTube channel and watch your other videos on how to chart, how to use indicators, how to find market bottoms, um, how to read chart patterns, Elliott waves. Uh, etc. All other kinds of, of profit making opportunities and learning how to do technical analysis. We have many members in the group that this is their specialty. This is their expertise. 
We have other members of the group that mining is their expertise. We have other members of the group that developing and programming and coding and security is their expertise. We have other, we you know we have members in the group from the from the stock market community, from the from the um, from the banking community. You know, it it takes a village. So take advantage of our resources and. If you have any questions, hop on the Telegram and ask us. That's the best place to get into the community and chat with people who, who know what they're talking about and are there to help you. Um, take advantage of this opportunity to join this community that's, that, that's being offered to you. But you need to be willing to do your own work. And that is part of the mindset of discipline that I'm trying to teach you, that I'm trying to teach you to inculcate it in yourself. If... If you're looking to invest long-term in a token, do your fundamental analysis. You need to spend, if you're looking to invest significantly into a long-term investment in a company, you need to do a lot of due diligence. You need to look at the team behind the token. You need to look at their development team. How active is their development team? How widespread is their community base? What does their community outreach look like? What's their Twitter look like? What's their, do they have a Slack? Do they have a Discord? What's their website look like? What's their roadmap? Have you read their white paper? Do you believe in the use case of their token? Do you believe in the community? Do you, do you think it's not a good project, but you just really, really, really like them? It doesn't matter. Do some due diligence. I mean, you are responsible for your money. I'm not responsible for your money, and nobody else is. And other people will take your money if you want to invest it incorrectly. So if you're going to invest long term in an ICO or a project or a token or a team or even Bitcoin, understand how it works, what it is, what it does, how to keep your money secure. How do you keep your tokens secure? Do you have a Trezor? Do you have a Ledger Nano S? You know, the stuff you need to know, stuff you need to take the time and do the work. Uh, if you're looking to trade, then do your technical analysis. Learn how to chart, learn how to read the charts, learn what patterns look like, learn how to follow simple indicators like simple moving averages, or learn to read the MACD, learn what patterns look like, learn what a flag is, you know, learn what triangles look like. And they look like this. That's a joke. It's a pattern. You know, just be willing to do your own due diligence, whether it comes to fundamental or technical analysis. You know, there's... A lot of people that I follow on YouTube and, and Twitter that, that do charting and talk about fundamental and technical analysis. I do my own fundamental analysis on everything I invest into. Um, I do my technical analysis on every position that I enter into. Um, and there are other people that do the same thing that I do. And I look to them for support and advice and, and being part of the community of technical and, you know, analysts and people who trade. And, you know, but I've put so much time and effort into learning how to do it myself that that I do do it for myself and it's far more rewarding and profitable for me to do it myself. You know, it's easy. You have no idea the information that you can glean from looking at a chart once you know what you're looking at and the confidence and skill and peace of mind that that will give you in executing your trades is invaluable. You plan a good trade, you look at the chart, you extrapolate the necessary data, you know what you're dealing with, you know what you're working with, you figure out your exit point, you figure out your stop losses, and then you enter into the market at a position with an allocation of your portfolio and your dollar cost average in, up or out, however you want to do it. And then you go spend time with your family, or you go out on a date, or you go read a book, or you go to the movies, or I don't care. Go cosplay. It's up to you. Live your life. Enjoy it. Have fun. I make my own plans. I plan my own trades. And I stick to my plan because I trust myself and I believe in what I'm doing. It takes passion, it takes faith, it takes strength. It takes belief and hope and stubbornness and a little bit of crazy. This is not a place for cynical people or haters or disbelievers or people who are self-loathing or self-deprecating or who want to tear others down. You know, that might seem non-germane to the conversation, but it's not. 
this is not a place for those with negativity in their hearts because they will crack under the pressure. They will crack under the FOMO. They'll crack under the FUD. They won't make good trades. They don't have the proper emotional discipline and control to do this. So if you have those issues in your life, you need to, I would highly recommend that you do some meditation and do some discipline and be aware of those things in yourself so that you can come back after you've healed and learn how to make money. Because I do see this a lot. I do see that those people who are negative, who have something inside of them that makes them want to hate on other people, um, that makes them want to disdain the success of others or to take from the success of others or belittle the success of others. They don't do well in this market. They don't do well in life, period. And the reason is because they're more concerned on blaming other people for their mistakes than maximizing their potential. Those are all things that can be fixed, I believe. I believe in, I believe in mankind. I believe in who we are. I believe in what we're doing as a people. And I believe in what I'm teaching here. I believe in what we're doing in this market. I believe in what we're doing with this technology. You know, I am a part of the digital monetary revolution. I am a Bitcoin holder. I am an altcoin holder. You know, I hold crypto assets. I take part in crypto dividends. I believe in blockchain. I believe in the revolutionary power to bring back the power to the people in the banking sector. I believe in the power to bank the unbanked. I believe in the ability to transact with anybody in the world at any time, however you want, whenever you want, in any amount that you want, in a way that is censorship resistant, that the government cannot stop and that nobody can stop. Nobody can take my money. It's my money. It's my Bitcoin. Nobody can take it away from me. There's no government that can enforce any laws on me in a direct way as it, as it uh, you know, responds to Bitcoin. Uh, no government can stop my payment. No government can take my Bitcoin from me through taxation. Um, I believe in what we're doing. And you need to believe in what we're doing, too, if you want to get in here and make real money. I love to trade. You know, I love to teach trading. I love to actively trade. I love to talk about trading. I love to talk about Bitcoin. I really love my life and what I'm doing with it. And if you can cultivate that mindset, if you can cultivate that faith and belief and hope, then you will do well. You will do well in whatever you choose to do. But you will definitely do well in this market. I love achieving a difficult task with skill because trading can be difficult. It takes patience and passion and skill and discipline. You know, you have to be a little stubborn and a little crazy to do well in this ecosystem. I truly believe that. The best traders I've met are a little crazy, just like me. You know, but I love it. You know, I'm a little different. You're all a little different. It's something that you can embrace. Take strength from it. And make yourself some motherfucking money. For Kraken Crypto, this is Jay Wise Free. I'd like to leave you today with a quote. This quote is from Jesse Livermore. Now, this is a quote that I've looked at for quite a while and that I've drawn a lot of strength from. Jesse Livermore, for those of you who don't know, was a very famous American uh, investor and security analyst uh, in the early 20th century. Um, started off when he was 15, making $1,000, which would have been about $16,000 today. But he said, it never was my thinking that made the big money for me. It always was my sitting. Got that? My sitting tight. It's no trick at all to be right on the markets. And you always find lots of early bulls and bull markets and early bears and bear markets. And their experience invariably matched mine. That is, they made no real money out of it. Men who can both be right and sit tight are uncommon. 
I found it one of the hardest things to learn. But it is only after a stock operator has firmly grasped this that he can make big money. It is literally true that millions come easier to a trader after he knows how to trade than hundreds did in his days of ignorance.